I always knew that a moment would come where those of us who had experience in the civil rights movement could again have an opportunity to be supportive of the work of younger people. Before the photo, Ted Landsmark was um, a person who had grown up in public housing in New York City with a single parent and a uh, physical handicap. And then I went on to enroll at Yale, Yale Architecture School, Yale Law School. And I moved to Boston to become uh, a lawyer and became director of a minority construction contractors association in Roxbury where I was an advocate for increasing the number of people of color working on uh, development and construction sites in Boston. And I was on my way to a meeting in City Hall to uh, advocate for increased work for minority laborers when I was attacked. I was very much alone after the attack. I found myself really struggling with a sense of what my identity was. All of a sudden, the work that I had done leading up to that, whether it was legal work um, or civil rights work by marching in Selma, voter registration work or some of the anti-war work that I had done, disappeared. I never knew whether people wanted to get to know me or because they wanted to rub shoulders with a short-term celebrity. And my identity, as far as most people who met me for the first time was concerned, was that of a victim of a racial attack on City Hall Plaza. Ultimately, after a year or two, I was able to reconnect with my roots. Uh, I was clear about why I was doing the kind of work that I was doing. I am extremely proud of the work that the founders of the Black Lives Matter movement have done, and even more proud of the work that people are doing now in the streets. In many respects, it is a movement without iconic leaders. It is a movement that respects that communities can and do and must speak for themselves. And it is a movement that is facilitated to a large extent by social media. And I think it's very important at this moment to sustain and hold accountable all of the people who are participating in the movement and also to assure that the movement translates into policy so that in the long term, uh, policy gets changed in such a way as to assure that future generations don't have to reinvent those movements in order to overcome the kind of complacency that sometimes sets in where you think, oh, we've won and therefore the battle is over. I would encourage young people who are in the streets today to interact with, inspire, learn from, and draw upon the experience of those of us who have worked on policy matters. And we can hold ourselves accountable for the work that has been initiated and the work that continues to need to be done.